don't get me wrong, we do have our like arguments every so often, but at the end of the day, we have each other and we do love each other so much. And when one achieves something, it feels like we both achieved it. You guys have already taken the gymnastics world by absolute storm. Who do you think has really shaped you guys into the athletes you are today? For me, I feel like it's one another because we've grown into the sport together and we've always had each other to be competitive with or learn from. So I think having each other and also our coaches teaching us the ways of gymnastics and having the belief in us to carry on. And um, yeah, I think it's just the whole team around us has definitely helped us, supported us and shaped us to who we are today. Yeah. I think it must be so special to go on this journey together and it's so rare to be able to <laughs> do anything with your sibling professionally. I mean, I definitely couldn't do anything with my brother professionally. We'd fall out like morning, noon and night. It would not happen. How, <laughs> like having that bond and going into professional sport together must really empower you forward. What do you think is the secret to your success and being successful gymnasts as twins? I think it's having one another, like you said, some, sometimes having a sibling, like there is going to be like arguments and tension, but I think because we're so close being twins and like having a sport we love, like both love the same sport, I think it really helped us because we can support one another and push each other to be the best we can be. And I think that's really the key to why we're amazing gymnasts today and where we are today. Don't get me wrong, we do have our like arguments every so often, sometimes in the gym and outside the gym, but at the end of the day, we have each other and we do love each other so much and we just only want the best for each other and in sport as well. Yeah, what kind of causes the biggest arguments between the two of you? Oh, it's, it's, the, li it's the little things like yeah. how sometimes yeah, in camera. Half of the time, we don't even know what we've even started the argument with. We just rattle on and say, but yeah, I think these are, even though they're annoying, they're normal and just like si siblings are just, can be the worst, but they're always there for you and uh, they'll be your ride or die, I guess. But is it almost more nerve wracking sometimes to watch the other compete than to do it your actual selves? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I think like, especially when it came to the team finals either the olympics worlds or europeans is definitely nerve-wracking because i am standing on the sides like watching her like cheering her on but i'm not the one doing the gymnastics for her so when there is a mistake i feel gutted for her as well as she is so it's very hard but at the same time it's nice to have each other on the on the floor like helping one another and it's just nice to achieve these big things together because like we always say we've gone through this journey together so being at the end goal makes it even more special and it's hard because you can't control the person you can literally only say the cue words that they need and sometimes for us we barely watch each other sometimes yeah because we're twins and sometimes if one of us make the mistake we're a bit like oh like, I might do the same thing. Yeah, and it seems like we've done the mistake. So sometimes you can see that we don't watch each other sometimes because it's so hard because you just have that feeling where you're like, oh, I want to watch, but it's so scary. But you literally can't control what they're doing. So you're literally screaming your head off, saying their keywords and just be like, come on, you can do it. How tough is the training and how much are you training like walk me through what training looks like for you two training is definitely hard and it's gotten a little bit easier just because we've um finished school but like during that time of school and gymnastics i'll say it was the toughest and yes it's still tough now but it's a lot easier than it was so say a regular training day now would be start at 12 finish at nine on our double days and on our single days it's half four till nine so it's between eight hours or four and a half hours and in total it's around 30 hours a week but then it's not only just the gymnastics training we have so many components that go into our gymnastics training and 
um, we have to either go into the, like then um, train S and C as well for our muscles to be strong in order to do what we're doing. So it's a mixture of just like S and C training, cardio plus the gymnastics. So it's quite a lot, but it gets us to where we are and what we all want to achieve. Yeah, and the physicality element of gymnastics is one thing, but mental strength is so important too because. In gymnastics, no matter what apparatus you are on, it's all about the fine margins and it falls on your body and your mind to execute the perfect move at the perfect time. Would you say that gymnastics is as much about mental strength as it is your physical skill set? Yeah, absolutely. We would say gymnastics is both 50-50. It can be mentally tough and physically tough. So sometimes our body's aching and we still have to carry on through the competition but that's where our mental strength comes in and we definitely have both sides to help we have an snc coach to help with our strength and conditioning but we also have like um psychologists to help us get through the mental side and be strong-minded and tough to get through those hard days as well and we also have our coaches who see us every single day and just know how much we want the goal and they'll just be there to help support us and push us through the tough times and be like, I know this moment might be tough, but if just keep pushing because we, we know how close we are to the goal. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely hard keeping the balance of both physically and mentally, especially when it comes to competitions. You have to be on top of your A game. You have to give 110% each competition and that's um, one day off, one day on. And it's definitely hard to push through, but... Um, we're still learning to manage our mental strength. What does working with a sports psychologist look like? What do you do with a sports psychologist to improve your mental performance? Like, what kind of conversations do you have? It varies a lot of times. Like, sometimes when, like, we're struggling in the gym or we're failing a lot, it kind of puts us down. So it's just being able to see the positive side because in gymnastics, there can be a lot of, like negatives because like you're still learning the skills and most of the times you're falling off the beam, falling off the bar, you're not landing a skill and it's like, oh, I'm not getting it. But then that's that's where the mental strength comes in to be able to carry on and perfect the skills. So when you're in competition, you don't have as many mistakes. And it's just making you resilient to push through them tough times if that you're physically tired or mentally tired your your body knows what to do and it's just biting the resistance of um being mentally drained and uh yeah it's definitely a tough sport have you learned to see failure as being part of your process in a way yeah definitely like it still like hits us being like failing as a negative but through see the psychologist working with our teammates coaches we've learned to see the positive side of it and seeing that failure is a stepping stone to success and yeah we're definitely improving that and if we have a mistake we know just to put it to the side and carry on and make that a way to our success and it's just a part of the sport you have to make the mistakes and fail many many times in order to achieve the skill or like to get the consistency because you're not good you're not going to be perfect straight away. So you have to go through the tough to get the positive or get the end result. Yeah, get the glory. And is there a moment where you've really had to dig the deepest mentally, do you think? Can you think of a moment you've really dug the deepest? I think for me, it was during the World Championships in Liverpool. Um, Competition was going so great and... There, I think after the all-around final, I got um, a sore ankle, which um, how we measure like ankles, we do like a knee to wall. And I normally have quite a high one. And I think after the all-around final, I dropped to a zero. And it was very tough time to get my knee to wall back to where it needs to be. And we worked really hard with the physio and um, been with my coaches and giving me the rest that I needed in order to get to the floor final. I did have to pull out in the vault final because we didn't want to take the risk and 
we knew I had a very great opportunity in the floor final and um, with my coaches I just tried to be so resilient and coming back and yes it was I had to dig, dig really deep and um, I'm so grateful for everyone around, around me during that tough time because we achieved such an incredible achievement and um, I wouldn't take any back any moment during that because I became world champion on that apparatus and I'm so grateful for everyone around and, me. Like even seeing it from a like third person, like sister perspective, seeing her like struggle and having to pull out of the vault final, like I felt it too and I felt so sorry for her because she worked so hard and and achieved an amazing all around position like coming third that's I think one of the best achievements anyone's had in an all around final at our world championships for Great Britain and just seeing that she had the opportunity to make a vault final but because of having one great achievement she had to drop another one and then seeing her push through the warm up and being able to just do that fantastic floor routine I just was inspired by her. I knew I had it in me, so it was all my decision just to carry on. And um, who who's going to say no to a fair little fight to be world champion? Yeah. What's so amazing about gymnastics recently, especially with Simone Biles, is she's become such an amazing role model, not only for her performances but also talking about mental health. And that must have helped so much as gymnasts, right? To have an idol like that talking so openly about that. How's that helped? you guys do you think i think it just helped the general sport as in for gymnasts to be able to communicate better to their coaches if they have any issues or mental issues and i know a few people who maybe have experienced what simone Bowles is that it's important just to communicate to your coaches because they can't read minds so they they need to be able to know what you're feeling or what struggles you're going through so they can start the process to help you break through that barrier or challenge that you are struggling with so I definitely feel like she's opened the gate to gymnasts being able to communicate to their coaches better. You touched on the Tokyo Olympics and what a moment that was. You were part of the team that got a bronze medal for Team GB in the women's team gymnastics which was the first British medal in that event in 95 years which is insane how long that's been yeah to even qualify for that team you had to come overcome so much adversity right like COVID restrictions you're finishing your GCSEs and you were even practicing in your own garage at one point to try and make that team weren't you yeah I think we just really used COVID to our advantage we did um as much gymnastics we could at home not like breaking any rules or anything so we tried to do as much as possible. We did lots of ballet at our house. We did lots of bike uh, bike rides and lots of running. So, And we also did lots of planning, like, okay, what skills do we need in order to um, be in the higher ranks of our nation and be able to be in that Olympic team and lots of planning, knowing what skills we need and what the routines, start values we need. So we definitely just use that moment just to... Uh, focus on like how we could be better as a person and I think beforehand we were so focused on doing our routines doing the gymnastics and getting the skills possible so taking that away was a really struggle but at the same time it was like okay right there's no gymnastics but what else can we work on and because there's so many factors in gymnastics it was like okay yeah, let's use this time to be the most flexible we can be so when we get back in the gym we only can focus on the skills and that's what we definitely did. It's like, okay, we can definitely be able to get stronger. We can definitely work on our flexibility, our elegance. So when we get back in the gym, it's not like we have to get back and be like, oh, we're like so unfit. We can't do the gymnastics. We're already going back in the fittest, the strongest, the most flexible. So all it takes is just to get the skills. And in gymnastics, there is a lot of muscle memory. So we were able to get them skills back quickly. Mm. And then since then, you've gone on to achieve so much individually. I mean, Jessica, you touched on this already, but you became the world champion on the floor last year. 
And you've also got a world silver, a bronze medal in the all round, which is the first time British gymnasts has ever achieved that. Five golds, European championships. I mean, the <laughs> when you actually list it all out, you're like, whoa. And you were made BBC Young Sports Personality of the Year as well last year. What does it take to become a world champion? Truly, what does that take? I think it takes a lot of just your time and sacrifices and just being at this gym every single day. It can be really tough just doing the same skills over and over again and just fine-tuning those little details of like a pointed foot and um, it takes a lot of determination and resilience and dedication and a lot of hard work and but I feel like if you have a goal so strong and it it outweighs the feeling of, oh, I can't, I feel tired today or I'm physically or mentally drained and can't be bothered to do it today or show up. But having the determination and resilience to keep coming in every single day and just do the same skills over and over again or learn new skills, it's definitely hard, but it's all worth it in the end it just anything is possible if you really put your mind to it and know that yes this is what I want and I'm going to achieve it and it definitely mm. really inspires me and many other gymnasts because we're twins we're very similar in what we do and seeing she's able to achieve such amazing things it's like right I can do it too so let's get in the gym work hard and one day I'll be able to be a world champion too being an athlete, your body is your tool and you have to maintain a, such a positive relationship with your body, don't you? How have you guys maintained a positive relationship with your body image, especially going through so many changes with your body as you're growing up and you're growing into your body as an athlete? Gymnastics is a very hard and demanding sport. You need to be very strong, fit and feel good in your body and we've gone from a little girl's body to a woman and it's just being able to like accept that and we've had to relearn our skills and our timing and it can be hard but we definitely got the support system around us to help us through it. But I think nowadays there's um, so many different types of bodies doing gymnastics. You could be tall but be able to swing the bars really well or you could be small which has a lot of power and be able to do big and powerful tumbles but I think in the code, there's so many skills that just suit other people and how their bodies operate. So I think the body around gymnastics is now just, it's so wide now. And I think as long as you are able to do your gymnastics and lift your body and just do it, incredible skills, I think as long as you just have good nutrition and a good balanced lifestyle and everything in moderation. Gymnastics has made the headlines many times over the last couple of years about welfare issues and well-being issues. How do you think that has changed in your careers so far? And do you think it's become a really safe space for you to excel now? I feel for the athletes that have gone through the tough times, but we can definitely say from our experiences, it's been definitely very positive and everyone's in a good headspace and we have the opportunity to speak to our coaches and have that amazing communication and relationship mm. as well yeah so I think it definitely shows the our gymnastics and we're so grateful for everyone around us and having the incredible team around us yeah and it's so clear that you do have that around you and you're able to be the amazing athletes you are and now the Paris Olympics are just under a year away Dun, dun, dun. Drum roll, anticipation is high. What do you both individually need to do to make the Olympics and get those medals? I think the team in the nation has grown so much. Like there is 15 of us in the team and there's we're all fighting for five places on that Olympic team. So it's definitely going to be really, really hard because there's such incredible gymnasts now and we all have our own different types of skills and routines that we're doing so it's definitely going to be hard but we're going to work super super hard and only time will tell and just that's our goal and we're going to try to achieve it as much as possible absolutely i love that and have we got our eyes on a gold medal the anyone would have their eyes on a gold medal and everyone's going to push for that medal and it's just being able to work hard seeing what everyone else is doing 
upgrading and just getting down to the execution, the perfection that we need to get that gold medal. And we're just going to take it each step as it comes because we still have a few competitions before getting to the Olympics. And yes, it's only a year away, but we can't rush now. We just enjoy the journey all the way to the Olympics.